Aw. Look. Our little wizard is all tuckered out. It's because he doesn't have a lot of stamina. He's got like two levels of endurance. From base sorcerer. But we got the prisoner's chain. Gives us a little more endurance. Right? 29 vigor. A little lower than I would typically run. Prisoner's chain. Boosting it up to 34. 45 intelligence. A little, little higher than I would typically run. But it's soul level 60. Plus six weapons. 45 intelligence plus the bellowing dragon crest ring. And we're using the scholar ring for that extra five points of intelligence. Uh, that helps our spells actually do damage. Around 500 with old moonlight if we hit accurately. And about 360 with soul greatsword. Soul greatsword more consistent. Old Moonlight, better potential. We're using crystal infused weapons because we have 45 intelligence, so of course we're using crystal for the best damage. With 12 strength and 12 dex, we're a little limited. Look at this guy. Look at him. You're a handsome guy, fella. Shut up, baby, I know it. Hey, alright. 12 strength and 12 dex means we have to use the simple weapons. Again. Crystal infused, not simple infused. But simple weapons. A stock, rapier, short sword, knight's crossbow, hazel pick. Fortunately for us in Dark Souls 3, simple weapons are the best. I'm using the short sword over the long sword uh, because it's lore appropriate, I think. The long sword is like that knightly kind of weapon. And the short sword is uh, more roguish. And that's who we are. We're a Vinheim rogue. I was originally going to be a Xanthus rogue, but Xanthus would be censored. Much like the word assassin would have been censored. Even though there's a starting class called assassin. Orbeck is an assassin, and that's kind of uh, how I took this build. It's like a Vinheim assassin dude. We have access to the simple weapons, no hyper armor weapons. Which means these situations, straight sword plus wizard guy, are an absolute pain in the ass to deal with. I have the storyteller staff, which is great for killing bosses. And boy did I have to kill bosses. We had to go into new game plus two, which means killing all the bosses three times, to get the sage ring plus two. Sage Ring plus two makes this build work. It makes the Hazel Pick true combo into Soul Great Sword and Old Moonlight. Let me tell you about trying to beat Aldrich in New Game Plus Two with a Soul Level 60 character using plus six weapons. Also Pontiff Sullivan. It's rough. But we did it. These sort of situations right here, uh, it's important that I realize I can't punish this player's mistakes because I'll be interrupted by the pew pews of this nerd. And this build hates nerds. Since they're not going to let me capitalize on their mistakes because they'll always be covering each other, it's best if I just, if I just Take a break. Have a seat. Now, what went wrong on that last mission? Bullied into a corner, blasted at with pew pews, spammed at with the dark sword. We let these dudes take away our space and a rogue an assassin needs space to operate it's very simple so let's get some HP back let's take a look at what's happening and let's reconvene 
you get 40 intelligence, plus 5 from the scholar ring. Act like it, damn it. Slumbering dragon crest ring covers the sounds of our footprints. Footprints, footfalls, footsteps. It's lore appropriate. Also, useful. Now, try some of this verticality. And let's try again. Only this time, with a wormy boy. As we stated earlier, Old Moonlight, higher potential damage. If our opponent is standing right in front of us, we're definitely taking Old Moonlight over Soul Greatsword. It has that really cool, make them slide back a few inches, death effect. And I love that. Now, it's nice to switch to that short sword in those tight 2v1s against passive players. Against a solo host, it's fun to stick with the rapier. You can get a little sweatier with it, switch to the Astok. I think both of them have their place. Ooh, don't roll bad. And don't get backstabbed. A build that combines cool, flashy combos and still lets me do sweet backstabs and parries and stuff. I love it. I love it. If you've seen the original Adam Barker video, I'm sure you are probably saying to yourself, Saint, I think you're supposed to be buffing that Hazel pick. And uh, it'll make the attacks do more damage, as well as the spells. And you'd be right. And then you would say, Saint, why aren't you doing that? And I'd say, because I forgot. I'm bad at remembering. But also, with this build, it's very important that I choose my moment to win. Because I don't have a lot of endurance, I don't have a lot of stamina. Now, some of that is negated by the fact that a lot of what makes this build work for me is hitting people and then waiting to see if they panic roll, and if they panic roll, I can really lay into them with a combo. While I'm waiting, I'm replenishing a little bit of stamina. But the point is, I have to wait for the moment. And if I had buffed the Hazel pick, I would have 30 seconds, and I feel like I would force the issue. And that's probably not the way to go. I should deal I should ideally still be buffing the Hazel pick, especially like right now. These 1v1s. There's no reason not to buff it. Because we can make the moment happen. We can make the magic happen whenever we want. Since we're playing on PC, we can backstab people who drink Estus, and the Crystal Melbreaker is excellent at that. It's also just an excellent backstab, grab, or repost. The damage on the Melbreaker, since it's a dagger, really good. Crystal infused 
really good. Also, it's a dagger. So just really good. This build loves to kill nerds. Your mission? Kill this nerd. I know they're a nerd because they're wearing those anime girl cat ears. I'm going to take away her G Fuel sponsorship. Your waifu is fucking dead. I, Saint Riot, I hate crossbows. I think crossbows are some of the most boring weapons in uh, Dark Souls 3. I have no issue with invaders using crossbows against groups of players, but holy shit, is it not fun to fight a crossbow. Against players who basically try and hole up in a small area, the crossbow, oh, especially a small room, exploding bolts, the crossbow, helps a lot. Storyteller staff, poison, that helps a lot too. But I don't use it a lot. Because, uh, like I said, it's not fun. I typically only use it against people who are trying to play the game and stop me from having fun. Fortunately, most of the people who play the video game are uh, into the same kind of fun I am. So we get to have fights. Sneaky assassin fights. suppose another thing I should point out is we're only using one Ashen Estus Flask. At this point in the game, we probably have slightly less Estus than the host. They probably have more Estus overall. Since we're an invader, our Estus has been cut in half, right? But they shouldn't have a huge Estus advantage over us. Unless there's somebody who's also like already beat the game and just playing through New Game Plus at a low level. So I'm only using one Ashen Estus Flask. Most of the time, I'm going to probably kill a Phantom or a Blue Spirit and I'm going to get an Ashen, uh, sorry, an Ashen Estus refill, right? But just in case, I also have a simple infused Cestus so that I can regenerate FP as necessary. And since I'm in New Game Plus 2, if I really wanted to, I could uh, I could have two simple infused Cestus and in those kind of situations where you just need to like run away, you could just like run away and double regen uh, with a simple Cestus. All the music that you've heard in this video is from the Katana Zero soundtrack. Absolutely amazing game. Very short. Loved it. Loved this build. Try to build similar to this with the Cleric's Candlestick. Um, I think I liked this one better. But the idea of playing this roguish bandit assassin, this highwayman that could do all these sweet combos 
He's dangerous if you don't roll away. And he's more dangerous if you do. I loved it. I... Oh man. I, I love this build. This is the this is the first spellcaster build. I've made other intelligence builds. A lot of you know, poise wizards. Moonlight great sword with a lot of poise, stuff like that. This is the first one that actually focuses on casting spells. And yeah, they're melee spells, but those are the spells that I like. And uh this build is so much fun. So shout out to Adam Barker. His video on this really like sparked an interest in me to try it out. The Hazel Pick combos, like they've been around forever, but uh, it wasn't until the idea of like the roguish rapier, a stock, short sword, crossbow, mail breaker, you know, 12 12 strength decks, simple weapon assassin. Uh, that's what, I don't know, that clicked, and man, I, I have loved it. 29 Vigor, 15 Endurance, both of those increased by 5 by the Prisoner's Chain to 34 and 20 respectively. 12 Strength, 12 Dex, gives us access to those easy to use weapons. 40 Intelligence, add 5 with a Scholar Ring. That's boosting our crystal infused damage, as well as making our spells slightly better. And then the Bellowing Dragon Crest ring to make those spells even better, better. And then Sage Ring plus two. So that our spells combo. And then have fun killing. There's a million different takes you could do on this build you're interested in it you can play around and find a version that suits you what you think would make a cool build or a cool character for me it's this guy and I'm pretty sure that's it so enjoy the rest of the fight thanks for watching the video and until next time later y'all